Hi there, in this video, I'll explain structured text language briefly, using the help window. After that, I'll start a practical project using Factory IO, which will be completed in the next video. During the project, I'll explain and use a global variable list, for the first time. CFC and SFC languages will be explained later. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. Now, Let's start the video, with the final project. On the right side, you can see a buffer station, and on the left side, the final program can be seen. The whole of my program includes three program organization units. The main task of the first POU, whose name is manual underscore auto, is calling manual or auto programs, according to the state of this selector. Now, the manual mode has been selected. So, Let's open the second POU, whose name is manual. Well, here is a simple program, just to turn on the two belt conveyors, with these push buttons. Note that, three sensors have been installed at the first, middle, and end of the box moving line. The last one has been used to count all boxes. For now, only one box has been moved completely. This value can be reset by the yellow push button. Now, let's call the program related to the automatic mode. Well, as you see, all programs have been written in structured text language, and the program which was written inside the third POU, is a little complex. I will explain it during the programming step. Now, let's press the start push button, to see the performance of my program. Alright, let's start the project. The first step is launching factory IO software, to design the buffer station. In this video, I've used a predefined system, whose name is buffer station. So, you can find and use it too, without any changes. As you saw, this system has three important actuators. The first one is this conveyor with this name, buffer conveyor. Well, the second actuator is the stop blade, which was used between the two conveyors, and finally, the third actuator is the second conveyor, whose name is exit conveyor. Note that, the speed of the two belt conveyors, can be determined with a number between minus 10 and 10. Now, let's launch Codesys to start the programming step. Well, let's create a standard project. As I mentioned in the beginning, 
I'll select and use the structured text language during this video. As you can see, unlike the previous two programming languages, FBD and Ladder Diagram, there aren't any instructions especially on the right side. Because all of them must be written. Let's use the help window, to learn some basics about structured text language. Well, you can write your keyword here, to use the search icon, or like me, directly go to where structured language is explained. Note that, Codesy supports standard structured text language, and also an extended version of that. However, their program codes consist of a combination of expressions and instructions. Here are some examples of expressions. An expression is a construct, that returns a value following its evaluation. Well, here are some common operators which can be used inside an expression, with an important point. The evaluation of an expression takes place by processing the operators, according to certain rules of binding. Codesys processes the operator with the strongest binding first. Operators with the same binding strength are processed from left to right. Let's continue. If you remember, lots of common instructions were explained in ladder diagram language, during the previous videos. Here you can find them and see their explanation. Also there are some useful examples, that display how instructions can be used within the structured text and FBD languages. For example, this one displays how the N logic can be implemented. Another important point related to the ST language, is its assignment operator. Here you can see how this symbol can be used to store an expression result on a variable. It works like the move instruction. The next page displays how a function output can be stored using this symbol. Alright, let's look at the statements section. Here are some common statements which are used by other high level languages too, such as C, C++ and Pascal. The first one is the if statement, which is the most common among them. Note that, each statement or any instruction must be concluded with a semicolon. Using the help window, you can learn how other statements or instructions can be used. Also, comments can be used easily, to explain different parts of the program codes. Now, let's go to Codesys, to start the programming step. Alright, as you have seen in the beginning of the video, the buffer station has two manual and automatic modes. First, let me change the name of the current POU, to manual underscore auto. It will be used to call programs related to the selected control mode, which can be manual or automatic. So, let me create two more program organization units, corresponding to the manual and automatic modes. Naturally, I'll select the structured text language for them, to learn it in this video. Alright, I want to use this selector, to select my manual or automatic program. Like previous videos, I will use the equipment name inside my program. It will help me to connect my program variables to the equipment correctly. Well, let's write my program, if the manual mode is selected by the selector, then the manual POU must be run. Alright, this variable must be connected to the selector. I can define it, inside the current POU, but maybe the other two program organization units, need to use it. So, let me add a global list variable to my project, with the name FIO, which is an abbreviation of factory IO. I will use it to define variables, that must be connected to factory IO. Because its type is global, 
they can be used by all program organization units. Similarly, let me define auto variable, related to the automatic mode. Note that, these two variables will be connected to the selector. Now, let's use them. The main point is that, the defined variables inside a global list, must be started with its name. For mine, its name is FIO. Now, let's extend the if statement, to call the auto POU. I can write, else if the auto mode is selected, then my controller must run the auto POU. Now, I want to use the last sensor, which was installed at the end of the second conveyor, whose name is at exit, to count all boxes. Either the manual mode is selected or the automatic mode. To know how an up counter can be used, I can use the help window, or use its explanation inside the library, where this function block is defined for codesies. I need to define an up counter in the declaration section, and then, use that inside my program. Well, after defining an up counter, I must determine its inputs. Well, this variable must be connected to the third sensor, and also I will need it inside the auto POU, so, let me define it as a global variable, inside the FIO variables list. OK, the next input resets the counter value. Let me use the reset push button for this purpose. Again, I define this variable, inside my global variables list. Now, the counter value must be sent to the digital display, whose name is counter. I can do that, inside the counter function, by defining the function output. Note that, just the counter value is important for me. Alright, let me test this part of my program, using the simulation option. OK, based on the if statement, these two program organization units can be called and executed. At the moment, they are empty and don't do any things. Note that, if both conditions are enabled, only the manual POU will be executed. Remember that, these variables have been defined as global variables, inside the FIO list. Now, let me activate the up counter using the sensor. As you see, the counter value has been increased by one unit. So, it seems my program works correctly. Now, let me exit from the simulation mode. Because I need to write two programs inside the two manual and auto program organization units. I'll complete this project in the next video. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.